I believe the minimum requirement is eight gigabytes. And if you have anything on your USB, you're gonna want to make sure you back it all up because what we're gonna do is gonna completely wipe it. First things first, go to the Windows 11 download page. You're gonna wanna scroll down, click right here, Windows 11, download. And then from there, it's going to give you the language option. Pick your language, hit confirm. It will begin downloading. While it does that, we're gonna go ahead and grab Rufus. The reason we're using Rufus over some of the alternatives is they have some fantastic options to make this whole process a little smoother and easier. Once you have all that ready, you're gonna to want to plug in your USB. You can see I have it plugged in right here. Make sure you do pick the right device if you have multiple things plugged in. From there, you click select and pick the Windows 11 image that you downloaded. We're gonna click on open and we can leave most of this at default. I'm just gonna change this for fun. Let's do win USB and then click on start. Now this is where we get some of the options that really make this nice. You can select really what you want and customize this how you see fit. But this right here is basically my default selection. I disable the data collection, disable BitLocker. I remove some of the requirements and create a local account. The one recommendation I have is do this something simple, no spaces. I'm just gonna do admin. This is gonna be the admin account of the NAS that we are creating. You could do your first name, you could do whatever. I just recommend leaving out spaces because later on it makes it a lot easier to connect with like Linux devices and things like that. Which is really weird to think about, connecting to your Windows server from your Linux desktop. So we're gonna hit okay and then it is gonna warn us that all the data is gonna be gone. We're gonna click okay again and let that do what it needs to do. And while it does that, the device that I'm gonna be installing this on is the TerraMaster T642 Three. This is the NAS that I've been running forever as my Unraid instance, but I did recently switch that out for the six bay Ugreen unit. So we got a free NAS to uh, desecrate. <laughs> and I would say the specifications of this NAS in particular are probably the minimum requirements that you're gonna want to actually do this. You can see here as an Intel Celeron N5095, quad core at two gigahertz. Right now it only has four gigabytes of RAM, which again, Windows eats up a lot of it. There are better options for a dedicated NAS unit. I can upgrade it if I want to, but I'm, I'm just rocking the four gigs for now. Setting up file shares and a couple Docker containers, it's gonna be fine. And I have six four terabyte drives in it. All right, we are finalizing, finishing up, and it is ready to go. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull my USB out, plug it into the NAS, hit my other keyboard, I actually have plugged into the NAS, and then boot here into the BIOS. Depending on your motherboard, it could be a variety of keys, somewhere between delete, escape, F1, F12, F11, something. But here I am just gonna go and select my boot as my USB drive, and then we are going to save changes and exit. There we go, <laughs> booting into Windows. And I tested this out earlier, the display drivers are absolutely cooked until I get the uh, drivers updated. I'm gonna go all English and go next, install now. Now I don't have a Windows product key. The only thing I'll say, is there are some fantastic resources on GitHub. Let's go like that. Here is the addition, it doesn't really matter. I just generally always go with Pro. All of the features that we're gonna be utilizing, I'm pretty sure are available on home if you happen to have a license for that. So accept their terms of service, let's go next. And then from here, we're gonna go custom install. So this is the drives. And if you have a lot of drives in your system like I do, it may look something like this. And you can see these are all basically four terabyte drives. And the drive I'm actually going to want to install Windows on is this one right here, drive six. I know this because it's a pretty small 128 gigabyte NVMe SSD. For sure, install Windows on an NVMe SSD or another SSD as installing really anything on a hard drive kind of sucks. So when you know the drive you want to install it on, all you do is go ahead and delete all the partitions. So I'm gonna tab, delete, okay. And then we go all the way down again and then we just repeat the process. So down, delete, okay. Until the entire drive is unallocated. And then you'll see drive six is completely empty. So all we do is go ahead and hit next and it should begin the installation process. And then when that's done, our computer or NAS is gonna go ahead and restart. There we go. Now, other than my absolutely cooked display drivers, you're gonna notice this is a lot better uh, Windows install experience than we normally get. After, of course, using Rufus. Gonna run a little update. Hey, there we go, just dropped us right in. All we had to do is pick our language and keyboard layout and we're good to go. Oh, it takes forever. The best Windows installation experience still is not a good one. Well, look at that, we are in. I pulled up my updates, started downloading all of them. I need drivers so it doesn't look like absolute garbage. So uh, <laughs> we will come back when this is completely done.
Alright, so after a few quick reboots, all the drivers are in and we can actually see what is going on.